In this subsection, we're covering the dangers of speed at an intersection. Both high speed in the former part of the video, as well as slow speed in the latter part of the video. The number one rule when it comes to intersections is never to enter an intersection at a high speed. This is the greatest risk when it comes to intersections. Let's have a look at the animation to start off with, and then we'll discuss a few points. Yeah, you can see the driver of the red vehicle traveling at an excessive speed, especially for a built up area where other drivers aren't expecting any vehicles to be traveling above a certain speed. The big risk when it comes to speed are the impact forces involved. When one increases one speed from 30 miles per hour, for example, to 60 miles per hour, it doesn't just double the force of the impact in the case of a collision, but actually quadruples the forces involved. In other words, for every increment of speed, you've got an exponential increase in the impact forces involved. Therefore, it's essential for us to approach an intersection at a much slower speed. Let's have a look at the real life clip to follow. Here we have an intersection where there are a number of vehicles waiting around the intersection, which then increases the likelihood of one of the vehicles now crossing over the intersection into the path of a vehicle that may be speeding. So if we're traveling down the road approaching the intersection, we want to be ultra cautious because of the probability of a vehicle crossing the intersection due to the fact that there's so many vehicles around the intersection. We do have a driver entering from the right hand side totally oblivious of this traveling at speed and suffers the consequences uh, when he collides in the intersection. So just to repeat the point, never enter an intersection at high speed. What I do when I approach an intersection, depending of course, whether there are any vehicles that are following closely behind me, so you don't want to slow down and serve as an impedance to them, to their flow of movement or irritate them in any way. But if there's enough clearance behind me, I always slow down when I approach an intersection. And the way that I do this, because I have a manual transmission or stick shift, is that as I'm getting closer to the intersection, I push the clutch of my vehicle in, I leave the car in gear, but I push the clutch in so that the wheels are freely spinning. So I free wheel up to and through the intersection. At the same time that I've got my foot on the clutch, I hover my other foot over the brake pedal. Not touching the brake pedal, but just hovering over the brake pedal in case some or other incident arises. And then I can quickly either put on brakes or I can quickly release the clutch and try and accelerate out of the situation. So I'm prepared for both scenarios. I've been doing this for years and it stood me in good stead uh, because you have that fraction of a second advantage in case you need to do something that you can either put on the brake or accelerate. Next real life clip, we'll see that uh, the in fact, two speeding vehicles that are approaching from the far side. And the camera turns right into the path of this vehicle. So this vehicle speeding, which one shouldn't do, that's the rule number one. But obviously for the camera, he needed to make sure that the path is clear before turning across. You can see this vehicle has its headlights on, but we can't always expect that others will do the right thing. So if you, this driver, don't just speed through an intersection assuming that others have seen you and that they will do the right thing as is evidenced in this clip. In the next animation, one of the other dangers is not necessarily a collision in the intersection, but because of a vehicle now trying to avoid a collision, it swerves out the way and then lands up on the sidewalk. And that could pose even a greater risk and danger uh, because of pedestrians perhaps being on the sidewalk, maybe a mother pushing 
her baby in a pram and she just happens to be in the path there. It could be that there's a, a, a bus shelter over here, a whole lot of people waiting for a bus to arrive and so the vehicle swerving off could collide into them and who knows how many fatalities there can be but that's the other danger. One danger, the collision, the other danger swerving or just glancing off the vehicle and the trajectory of the vehicle being redirected into the path of any pedestrians on the sidewalk. So there we can see exactly that situation in this real life clip. Fortunately there were some barriers here and a lamppost that stopped the vehicle but had he progressed further there could have been a whole lot of pedestrians that he could have crashed into. This last real life clip I've just included for interest sake because what happens here is that there's somewhat of a hill or a bump that the road forms over here and so if there is such an intersection and you approach it at speed uh, there's a good possibility that your vehicle could actually take off from the ground as we'll see when we run this clip and so it could actually take off into the air when you come to land you may not land straight might land slightly skew and that will shoot you off either uh, into the sidewalk or into other vehicles. So we've got, got, got to be cautious if it is an area that we travel in uh, where the road does form humps.
In the former part of the video, we were having a look at the dangers of high speed at an intersection. Here we're covering the dangers of slow speed. Now this forms a danger because when a vehicle travels too slowly through an intersection, they expose themselves to the risk of a collision or impact simply due to the fact that they're spending more time in the intersection instead of clearing through the intersection fairly quickly. That's what we see in the first animation, drive of the red vehicle too slow and spends too much time in the intersection and increases the risk of a collision. You see this in the real life clip as well. So this vehicle traveling far too slowly to cross the intersection for the oncoming vehicle. Had he traveled quicker, there wouldn't have been any incident, but too slow and lands up gliding. In the next animation, what I'm depicting here is hesitancy in the intersection. So never hesitate, because when you hesitate, decide to stop and then go, or go stop, not sure what you're going to do. If you're unsure of what you're going to do yourself, then you can't expect any other motorist to be able to predict your movements, and so they're going to be just as confused as what you are, and not know how to take any corrective action. So once you've decided on a course, just stick to that, and not to hesitate at all. That's what we see in the animation. Driver hesitates and lands up colliding anywhere. So yeah, we've got this vehicle turning through the intersection, decides to put on brakes, just touches his brakes, and then decides to go, but lands up colliding because when he does go, he's traveling too slowly, doesn't accelerate to try and get out the way. In the third and the last animation, what we have is the worst case scenario because the driver of the red vehicle wants to turn through the intersection, realizes there's an oncoming vehicle, and so decides just to put on brakes and comes to a complete halt in the intersection. So now if you've stopped in the intersection, you're really increasing your risk of a collision because you're spending all the time now in the intersection. You're not having any movement in order to try and get out of the way. Once you've come to a stop to try and pull off then, it's actually going to take you a lot longer. So that's what we see in the animation. Driver panics, just puts on his brakes, and there's a collision. So we'll see that in this real life clip as well. It's the worst thing to do, never to stop in the path of oncoming vehicles. Either to brake, to avoid them if you can, but the best thing to do is to try and accelerate through the intersection. I'll, I'll explain why. So the driver slammed on brakes, and now you can see he exposes himself to the full impact of any vehicles that are crossing the intersection because the vehicle impacts right on the side of the vehicle. If he had slowed down, the vehicle may have caught the front of his vehicle as opposed to the middle, or better, if he had accelerated, this vehicle could have caught the back of the vehicle. Now, that's the best case scenario if you are going to be impacted Try and make sure that the vehicle impacts you towards the back of your vehicle. So in other words, you're going to try and accelerate out the way. And the reason why it's a best case scenario is that if it impacts the back of your vehicle, that's the lightest part as opposed to the front where the engine is. And a lot of the impact energy will be converted into kinetic energy. In other words, energy of movement. So the impact will force the back of the vehicle to swing around. And as it swings around, it takes on some of that energy as opposed to it not swinging around and the vehicle itself absorbing all the impact energy, which means you'll have greater damage done to the vehicle. If it's impacted right in the middle, well then it's going to take a lot more of that impact energy, not converted to kinetic energy, but also you either as a driver, passenger, or passengers in the back, you stand the risk of being directly hit by the impact energy, and so a greater risk of injury as well. I've included this clip 
because here we actually have a vehicle being towed by the truck. And so we've got to be cautious if we see this in an intersection. If you see two vehicles in close proximity to each other, they're traveling at the same speed, then be aware that there's a likelihood that the one vehicle might be towing the other vehicle. So in other words, you coming along from the far side here, you're not going to be able to try and make it between these vehicles because of the tow rope. And so that's going to cause a lot of complications. So the telltale sign there is two vehicles crossing an intersection uh, in close proximity to each other and traveling at the same speed. So you may not be able to see the tow rope unless they put some uh, nice indicator flags to alert you to that. But uh, you see in this clip, they haven't done that. So it may not be that visible, the tow rope, but expect if you do see that two vehicles close to each other traveling at the same speed, there might be a tow rope between the two of them. And so just be cautious of that. Please like, subscribe and get notified.